My name is Jonah, and I've been an MSC -er since second grade, four years now. And I remember when the greenhouse was just an idea. I remember brainstorming in Shakira's second grade class and discussing ideas and building plans for our future greenhouse. Four years later, I'm standing here in front of you today. Our greenhouse has been built, our ideas have come to life, and now, that I'm, and now that I'm in fifth grade, I'm proud to be part of the greenhouse family. This year, in my fifth grade science class, we used the greenhouse to explore hydroponics, aquaponics, and all types of things we, you won't find in an ordinary classroom. And we learned a lot. The way we learned was through experimentation, straight up and hands on. My classmates and I have developed a bunch of different experiments packed with questions, knowledge, and discovery. After, uh, we start our experiments by working on our systems, such as aquaponics and vine crops. After a little while, we got used to the jobs and started asking questions. We designed projects to test our questions. Then we made hypotheses to predict what was going to happen. And then the real fun began. Today, we are going to share those experiments with you. Some of our experiments were great successes, some of them are complete failures, and some of them produced results that we'd never have expected. My experiment, for example, tested the different materials you can use to grow a bean plant. In fancier words, we compared different growing media to see which medium produced the optimal plant growth. As an add-on, we also tried to discover new growing media and invent our own. Some of the growing media I tested were composted tree bark, rock wool, coconut fibers, paper towels, and sponges. Sponges were the growing medium of my own invention. Unfortunately, the sponges didn't do the best, but I was still proud of my idea. Over the course of a month and a half, I planted bean sprouts into each of these five materials and monitored the plant growth every week. You might be surprised by the results. For some reason, the rock will perform the worst, which was strange because that is what we usually plant in. The beans started to sprout but then died. To be honest, I think I made a few mistakes with my weekly watering. I might have missed it one week while we were on break. Whoops. The paper towel, on the other hand, performed the best because it seemed, the paper towels seemed to have absorbed the most water. However, considering my results for this experiment, though I concluded that the paper towels were the best growing medium, there were flaws with this, especially if you're testing materials that have never been used before, like sponges. I guess considering all that, I've learned that plants need a lot of attention. And that's what science is all about, learning. In the future, I'll make sure to administer more care to my plants. I hope you've enjoyed hearing about my project. Now you'll hear from other students in my class whose experiments, I hope, had better results than mine. Thank you. My name is Rodrigo Sanchez de Lozada, and I work in the VIG. The VIG is a vertical hydroponic system used to grow plants using very little space. My project was to see which plant attracted more aphids. I planted kale, lettuce, and spinach. I thought more aphids would go to the lettuce because they have bigger leaves, and I was right. Uh, I did this project because I am always finding many aphids, and so I wanted to get answers. I checked and recorded the aphids in my plants every week for two months. Since my project was in the VIG, uh, I, ha I had to climb up with a ladder, bring the plants down, check them for aphids, and finally uh, bring them back up. My results were 216 for the lettuce, 178 aphids for the kale, and 36 for the spinach. And this was in nine plants. To keep my plants alive for two months, uh, I, had to, I also checked the pH and the EC in the water every week with a meter. After I was done, I was planning to use uh, aphid, ladybugs to get rid of my aphids, because ladybugs eat aphids. But unfortunately, my teacher harvested the plants, and I guess she had aphid salad. This knowledge will let me know which plants need more care and which ones I can trust that will have less aphids. My experience in the greenhouse made me change my view about plants. Before, I thought of vegetables as gross, nasty food. But now I think of them as not only fresh, delicious food, but as cool, interesting science projects. I learned that if I grow my own vegetables, they will, they will be tastier. 
That makes me think that if I buy food that is grown close to where I live, I will have tastier food. If every family in New York City had a VIG, uh, then people will not have to ship food as much and that would, re that would reduce the CO2 in the world and it would save energy. Also, people would save money and their food would be tastier. Some of my friends built mini VIGs. I think more people should do it. In the future, I will use this to pick out what food I buy when I buy groceries. For example, I will buy pears grown in New York and not pears grown in New Zealand. Maybe after this presentation, you will do so too. Thank you. Hi, my name is Jesse O'Sullivan and I'm here to talk to you about my project in the greenhouse. I got interested in the VIG because of all the things you can do. One of the things that you could do is, for example, get some of the plants from other places in the greenhouse and put them in there. My project was to take a plant from other places in the greenhouse and put one all the way at the top of the VIG with full sunlight and one lower down with a little less sunlight, naturally covered by other plants. Each week I would measure them with a ruler and see how they would grow. I thought that the one with full sunlight would grow more. At the end of a few weeks, I found out that it was true. It did grow more. Sometimes I come up for my recess time to help kindergartners so they can learn about this too. This will help others in the future so they know to give plants the sunlight they deserve. Thank you. In the greenhouse, we learn a lot of things through our jobs. My job is aquaponics. Aquaponics are an important part of a hydroponic greenhouse. Aqua means water, so people with that job work with the water inside the fish tank. The fish tank is a system with many parts. The floating raft of plants, the tilapia in the tank that eat the roots of the plants, the clarifier which has the fish waste, the biofilter, and some more plants. In the greenhouse, everyone learns how to do the different water tests. Ammonia, pH, nitrite, and nitrate. We have to make sure that there isn't too much or too little of anything. We have a biofilter that turns the ammonia into nitrite and then to nitrate with the help of bacteria. Some of my friends and I are responsible for the nitrate test. Nitrate is a nutrient that can be used as fertilizer and is important inside the fish tank. My friends and I take five milliliters of fish water, put in some drops of test solution, shake the bottle a few times, and wait. And then presto, the color changes, and we compare it to a special color card, which tells us how much nitrate there is. For example, if it was very bright yellow, then it, that means that it's zero ppm. If it's very dark red, then that means that it's 160 ppm. One week, my friends and I, two of my friends and I were doing the test when we wondered if the results would change depending on the area um, what, where the water came from did. So we decided to make that our project. Our hypothesis was that the results would vary depending on the things that the, the purpose of the place where the water came from. We tested the VIG, vertically integrated growing, the NFT, nutrient film technique, the water inside the clarifier, the water inside the biofilter, the water inside the tank, and finally the normal way, the water flowing back into the tank from the biofilter. The results were different. We think that that happened because of the different nutrients other than nitrate that the water had inside it because of the things that the water did and was used for. For example, the clarifier wouldn't have nitrate-filled water in it because it has ammonia, which is toxic to plants and is produced from the fish waste while nitrate is good for the plants. So since learning never ends, and especially in science, I wonder what other people's results would be and what they would be outside of the greenhouse elsewhere in the school. Maybe I'll do that project next year. Thank you. 
My name is Margot Harrison, and I'm a fifth grade student at Manhattan School for Children. As you have seen, having a greenhouse located on our rooftop has been a wonderful addition to the life of our school in so many ways. Learning about the environment and how to take care of our planet from taking care of our greenhouse has made the environmental program at our school amazing. Right now in the fifth grade curriculum, we are all finishing up our science experiments. Many experiments in my class consist of the challenges raised by nutrient deficiency, the various benefits of growing with different soils, and different kinds of nutrient supplements. My research question is, which is the best nutrient substance for plants? Compost tea or standard hydroponic nutrients? Compost tea is the liquid extracted from our homemade greenhouse compost, made of worm poop and biodegraded food and paper. Hydroponic nutrients are the nutrients that are usually bought as a powder containing all the nutrients essential for growing plants in water. When I knew we were going to do science experiments, I was immediately inspired to do this project. My hypothesis was that compost tea would be the superior nutrient substance for plants. Our procedure to test this experiment was to grow four plants in the two different nutrient sources, two plants in each, and measure using the following three parameters, height, the greenness of leaves, and the abundance of leaves per plant. We kept all other factors that we knew could affect plant growth constant, such as sunlight. We used the NFT hydroponic system in our greenhouse as the experimental design for our project. After three weeks, our results soon became clear. The plants relying on the hydroponic nutrients were thriving in all three parameters. We believe that hydroponic nutrients are better than compost tea. However, while the outcome of our experiment began to come clear, another question began to form in my head. Even though compost tea could not support a, a plant alone, maybe if it was combined with hydroponic nutrients, the combination of the two would be even better. I now want to make this my next science experiment. We had some limitations to our project. First, all four plants got infested with aphid bugs. Yet I do not think this affected the outcome of our experiment because all four plants appeared to be equally infested. So we believe that, di that the difference in growth we observed was due to the different nutrient source. Another problem we noticed were the pale green spots appearing on the plants relying on compost tea. I decided to research which nutrient provided plants with a healthy green color. After researching this topic, I discovered that the nutrient I was searching for was called phosphorus. This led us to believe that if we added more phosphorus to our compost tea, our plants would possess a more healthy green color instead of pale spots and discoloration. As you can see, the greenhouse has provided a fertile environment for everyone to learn by working together. The hands-on projects of fellow students and teachers has been, to me, almost as valuable as the science itself. Overall, our school has definitely benefited from the MSC Greenhouse. The concepts we have learned there will stay with us forever, influencing our lives and daily choices in the future. Thank you, and I hope you have enjoyed it.